Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina, this is Raja and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. So last week I showed you how to create a small piece of multicolored fur. Make sure to go and check that out if you haven't already. Now let's demonstrate that today in a bigger piece. So for this one let me introduce you to Raja, my best buddy. And although we have two dogs, which I love both equally, she is just the more cuddly dog as you can see. So that happens to be my weak spot. Okay, so enough of me yapping, now let's get on with the thing you are here for and let's get this dog started. Again, just like last time, I did include the part where I made the background. But if you're interested in those, stay tuned for the video next week where I'll go over some of the backgrounds I've done already. When you are working with curly or wavy fur, it can be hard to find out where those curls are going. So when blocking in the base layers on complicated fur like this, I just try to get in the darkest and the lightest shapes in first and not worry too much about the details. You can slowly define layer after layer. I use black and a dark cold grey to block in my colors. Blend it out and then add the eyebrow. Try not to do this before you blend it your darkest colors, otherwise you will end up with your colors smudged altogether. This is a rather easy underlayer, so let's move on to our pencils. Start with a grey pencil to add some hairs. In general, almost all of the long strings have a curve to them, while the short strings are straight. And in this case, they are of course even more wavy. So make sure when you are drawing these hairs to follow the direction of the fur and implement those bends and curves. With the pencil, we're now defining that shape. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I try to get it as close as possible. Since our underlayer is a little bit lighter than black, I can still go over it with my black pencil. I'm particularly fond of this black, the one from Creta Color. Also because these hairs overlap the background, they stand out even more. Use different tones of grey to help define the clumps even more. Build up your layers like this to create more depth in your work. A wildlife artist yourself? To get 4 reference pictures like these every month, just sign up for my monthly newsletter through the link in the description. I'm going to fill up the eyebrow with different shades of red, also some yellow, and pull black lines from the black fur into the patch to create the illusion of fur even more. I did a layer or three, repeating this process to build up the fur. Moving on to the eye, there isn't that much room for detail here since it's such a small piece. So you have to do your best to somehow still put that detail in there. As this breed and my dog in general has really warm, soft looking eyes, I'm using a warm dark red as my underlayer and then adding brown on top. Add in black for the pupil and make sure you leave the white blank for the highlight. In the reflection I'm adding some of that green that's also in the background. I thought doing my highlights in a little bit of reflected color from the background would look nice. I repeat this until I'm happy with my colors and saturation. For the white fur in the middle of the dog, I'll block that in with a very light cream color. Especially since I'm using a white paper, I need to establish some base color where future white hairs will show on. For the area underneath the nose, I'm using a light grey but I added some brown on top to make it warmer and adding some pink tones on the side. And the Bernese has this crease in its forehead, so I'm adding a small touch of light pink there as well. And as you should know by now, blend blend blend. Blend, blend, blend. Blend those colors. Blend those colors. Next up, I'm building the underlayer of the nose. I use a dark brown for the bottom side, fill up the nostrils with black, and for the top side, where most of the light source hits the nose, I use light brown, almost a flesh color even, and I use gray on the corners where her nose is darker. And then blend this all out again. Time for my pencils now. I'm starting at the top of the head and I'm using a light blue to make a smooth transition between the black and the white fur, using a saturated color when going from black to white or vice versa. In this case, light blue helps build a realistic look. And since our underlayer isn't white, we can add white strokes and they will show. Where the black and the white meet each other along with the blue strokes, you also add black strokes starting from in the black fur and ending in the white fur. The fur underneath the nose can be built up with white and black, just smooth it out a bit. I add in the red patches she has on her muzzle. Use black to darken the nostrils up and to outline where her lips meet. Just blend it out with your finger a bit to make it softer. 
for the texture of the nose itself, I'm going to add dots in brown color that matches that of her nose. On the side, we need it to be a little bit darker, so I add dots in black. When you do this, try not to press down too hard. I repeat this process of dots and softening them a few times, each time going a little lighter where it needs to be. Add some highlights underneath the nostrils with your white pencil and put in some white hairs at the top so it looks natural. Now we can just finish the right side of the muzzle, which is basically a copy of the side we did already. Time to put in the right side. Again, start by blocking all your colors in, the same black and white as on the left side, and for that red color, use the color from the eyebrow and a lighter shade. Wait with the eyebrow patch because it's so small that we will smudge it otherwise. Here again, we'll be building the fur with our black and gray. And for the red brown spots, we'll be going over it with a mix of reds. Keep going lighter with them to build up the fur and repeat. Also, by using red alongside the edge there, you get a more realistic look. The other spot has a more yellowy tone to it, so adjust your colors accordingly. But see how I use red there where it meets the black. Then I'm popping in that right eye. Again, starting with black and brown and build it up like we did before. Starting on the bottom of the muzzle now. Again, blocking in those colors with browns, grays and black. When it comes to the tongue, the tip is the lightest part, so we start with a pink there. Go a shade darker and end with black at the base. Blend everything out. I'll build up the brown fur with red bright colors first and make it darker underneath with a dark grey. After that we add some orange tones, I use a few here just to make it a bit more interesting. And I decided I want an area a bit darker, so instead of glazing it here, I just added some black for my underlayer, blended that out and then used my sponge very lightly to darken that area a little bit up again. Then using that mix of colors again for the final layers, in these layers I add more detail and start to overlap some of the fur on top of each other, and letting those pencil strokes show through rather than everything being so blurry. You also want to watch out for the length of the strokes, for example along the muzzle you don't want long strokes or it would look like the fur is abnormally long there. For the tongue, we'll just put a second layer and then blend it out. Black at the base, a dark purple in the middle and some pinks at the bottom. I'll also build that black stripe that kinda splits her tongue in half. To build those small creases and nicks, add light pink dots and blend it out softly. The fur underneath her lip is more brown, so we need to add that color there. But we also want to lighten it up there, so go in with your white pencil and make sure to use a light hand so your white is more translucent. Switch back and forth here between your darks and lights to build this up layer by layer. For the lowest part of her lip there, we can put white on and press harder this time. Because of what was underneath there first and the color above, the white fur you add now shows through. Moving on to the body, blocking in those colors. Make sure that even when you are just blocking your colors in, that you follow the general direction of the fur. The way that the fur clumps and the direction of the fur all determine underlying bone and muscular structure of your subject. If you throw in shadows and highlights in the wrong place, it will make your subject look deformed. So pay close attention to where your grey and black should go. Then I first go over with a grey pencil for those highlighted hairs. You really got to think of fur as a pile of lumps and clusters rather than individual hairs. If you start to draw each strand of hair, it is going to look wiry and really unrealistic. But in your final layers, do include a few flyaway hairs just to make it a little bit more realistic. Also, keep in mind that you need to vary the length and curve here on the body. Build your layers with a mix of white, grey and black. On the side, I used blue to reflect the background there. I also followed the edge of the dog to add in some highlights in the color matching the background, so some yellow, some green and so on. Now to block in her chest, our Bernice has a more creamy color of white and at the top even some pink in there. So I used the flesh color to block in the darkest areas and filled the rest up with white. Blend everything out again. I'm using the light blue for the transition between the black and white fur. Then I'm using my white pencil to build the fur. And same like in the black fur, it's really important to follow the direction here. I personally blend it a bit more for a softer look. Add some more strokes on the side to build a smooth transition. And now that the chest is in, I can clearly evaluate the values of some other areas. The chin, for example, I need to increase the saturation there, so I add a few layers. 
All that is left to do is fill up that small area of black fur on the right and we'll build the fur there exactly like we've done already. Blue light on the transition, grey to add layers of hairs as well as black and white and then some green and blues for those reflected colors. This was the last part in my different color series and I sincerely hope you enjoy them. If you think I left any colors or maybe even some patterns out that you guys would love to see, let me know in the comments below. And remember to stay tuned for next week's video where I'll cover some backgrounds. See you then! And of course, before I forget, have a great week!